hello there. Welcome back to this, the ninth episode of Creating Heads in Fusion 360. Apologies for the delay in posting this episode. I've had a busy week spent on my business. In this episode, we're going to make some final adjustments to the 2D form before we transition into 3D. By dragging entities as lines, I find that it offers a faster way of modeling than dragging the individual vertices, but it still allows you to control the detail more than if you were dragging sections. Knowing when to drag a section, line or point is a skill that comes with time. At this stage, I'm trying to make sure there aren't any glaring errors in the surface lines. You know, making sure they are appropriately distanced and aiming to keep tension in the features. Don't get concerned if you're following along and finding your lines aren't exactly the same as mine. Consider this. I didn't learn how to do this from a tutorial. This is my fifth head model. I highly doubt I found the best way to do it. So. If we focus on the nose, notice that my adjustments are all attempting to make the vertical lines equidistant. This looks nice in 2D, but I often find once I'm in 3D, I have to readjust. So why do it? Well, if the surface lines are too bunched up in 2D, and then you transition to 3D, it can cause what I will coin as wrinkling. Essentially, it can form wrinkles that cannot be sort of flattened. So make sure lines don't sit too close together Use the lines on the nose I have created as a guide, since the distance is appropriate. Now we just want to make some final adjustments. Okay, we're now ready to go from 2D to 3D. Let's have a quick glance at the right side. You can see that our surface lines, it lines up with the edge of the face. Therefore we drag our surface to fit the face. We want to leave the outer edge undisturbed. You can drag a box to save some time to select the features I am now selecting. The reason I select them individually is because at the time I wasn't 100% sure which sections I wanted to drag out. And by doing it in this slow and methodical way, I was able to make sure that I had made the right decision. So I'm speeding it up now, but essentially we are selecting the first sections to be extruded into 3D. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Well, things are about to get interesting. And by interesting, I mean odd and difficult. So select all the features, making sure you don't leave odd sections unselected. If we rotate to the side, now we can drag our selection into the third dimension, like so. Instantly, I can see that I need to select more of the forehead. So I pan back round to this weird monstrosity and select all the extra sections I need. I'm highlighting them with my cursor and select uh, while holding shift, select them. Now we need to pan back round to the side and drag our surface out. Hopefully the forehead and chin parts of the surface should be roughly following the side profile. Don't worry about the other features for now, the detail will come later. And that's the head model done. <laughs> Only joking. So if we deselect the sections and then double click a line offset from the perimeter, we can change the surface so that the face doesn't have any sharp right angles. So by dragging that line back, we restore tension to the model. Remember the lines now require tension in all three dimensions, which sounds hard, but it isn't. Notice with the line I've just selected, I don't want to select a point that touches the surface perimeter. Hence I deselect the lines that touch the perimeter. And then crazily rotate the model either as a celebration or uh, out of sheer unadulterated rage. <laughs> um, and now you're going to want to select a large section of the face slightly inside the previous section and continue to drag it uh, forward to roughly adhere to the side silhouette, um, making sure you don't miss a surface in your selection. So that's pretty good. Yeah, click that. So as we extrude the face out um, some more, you can see that the eye socket and chin tip uh, will need to be dragged forward at some point. For now, we will select another smaller section, this time at the center of the face, to bring it further forward. I know it doesn't look like much at the moment, but don't be disheartened. So dragging that inner section further forward again until it hits the brow, and that looks about right. So just going to pan around, um, yeah, pan around for a laugh. 
I don't know why I do this, but I end up doing it all the time. Anyway, um, now for the nose. So zoom in and select all the, sec the sections surrounding the nose. You can drag a selection box um, to speed this up, but you need to make sure you're only selecting the right sections. So you may as well follow along and then you can extrude the nose like I do. Um, yeah. Anyway, that concludes it for today's episode. I hope you found it helpful. Again, apologies for the breaking content. Um, I've just been a bit busy. Thanks for um, watching and make sure to check out my site, Joyce3D, if you have the time. Um, yeah, that's it for this one. Bye.